to the 90s and heat indexes above 100 degrees this week. Cities and towns have opened cooling centers to provide relief from the heat. Governor Ned Lamont reminded Connecticut residents that they can call 211 for information on cooling centers near them. Lamont is urging residents to take caution for the next few days during the expected heat wave, especially the elderly or those in poor health. A group of parents and students are rallying together calling on the University of Connecticut to withdraw its policy mandating the COVID-19 vaccine for students. On behalf of UConn College students and parents, the Family Freedom Endeavor Incorporated said it's ordering the university to withdraw the policy by July 2nd or face a lawsuit. The FFE is a nonprofit organization providing representation and litigation involving the defense and promotion of civil rights, primarily for families and children. This is Wendy London in Rhode Island. Due to the potential for unhealthy concentrations of ground level ozone today, the Rhode Island Department of Environmental Management has issued an air quality alert for the entire state. The DEM predicts the air quality will reach unhealthy levels late this afternoon and early evening. This is Rhode Island Bureau Chief Wendy London. The Managing Director of Paragon Trust Company and tax and private client practitioner joins us to bring a common sense approach to money in a world of total insanity. Let's welcome Tony D'Angelo. All right, my very good pal Tony D joins us every Tuesday to chat about, uh, well, a lot of different things. We focus a lot on the governor of the state of Connecticut as Tony has been just dogging him, rightfully so. Uh, trying to get to the bottom of a lot of different things and shining a, a light on some very, very skeptical dealings that the governor and his wife have. But, Tony, good morning. How are you? Good morning. and proud to be among everybody, Lee Elsie. So uh, we had this conversation. I was having this conversation with a couple of different people the other day about what the greatest Western was of all time. Maybe it's a generational thing. I happen to love the movie Tombstone, but you, on the other hand, have a, a different opinion. Well, I, I, I do, and, and, and perhaps I, I, I show my age. I was listening to you guys talk about it, and, uh, you know, uh, the esteemed, uh, aired it and scholarly Mr. Ceruto and uh, the coach and you. Um, the best cowboy movie of all time, bar none, forever and ever and ever, is High Noon. All right. Made in 1952. Hold on. And... It's, it is a Western. It is very Western, but it, there are so many things in it. The plot of the movie, it's uh, Gary Cooper and Grace Kelly, uh, and uh, Lloyd Bridges is in it, and a couple of people you'll recognize. Harry Morgan uh, from MASH has a bit role. Uh, it is about a marshal leaving town on his wedding day to have a new life and start a store with his uh, lovely new bride, who's Grace Kelly. You can't really get any prettier than that. And four people are released from the state prison, and there's a telegram that they're going to come into town and kill him on that very day. And when you get into the reactions of all the people that were his friends, even Grace Kelly, who was his bride, there are so many overtones. And it, like where Marvin says, and which really touched my heart, is where he identifies with that High Plains drifter character, I want to be Will Kane. I want to be Gary Cooper because... Who are you when the world caves in? Mm. You know, what happens when, uh, you know, and then these are the questions that go on in this movie. Can you trust, and these are all the post-COVID-19 faults, and to your point, leadership. Can you trust your church? Can you trust the political system? Can you trust your friends? Can you trust the community? Um, can you trust uh, what's going on around about you? It is, I, 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 my name is Tony D'Angelo, my name is not Lawrence, I will not spoil it for you, it's a couple of bucks on YouTube. Kids, you need to watch this movie, again, the best Western movie of all time. And to, to give you a little flavor, we're talking about this off the air, the producer of High Noon is Stanley Kramer. Now, if you've seen it's a mad, 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 mad world, that's Stanley Kramer, and it's that World War II GI cynicism of you know what what people and what systems and what politics and all this what they tell you as opposed to what it is i mean i have a great identification for this movie and if nothing uh, watch it because of grace kelly it was up for seven academy awards at one four uh was done on a very low budget but uh you have to see grace kelly to show you my my age i went to a uh, coffee shop. I go to the coffee shop down over here in Pomfret, and one of the real pretty girls, pretty young girl. One day I said to her, I said, uh, you know, sweetie, you look just like Grace Kelly. And she looked at me and says, Tommy, who's Grace Kelly? Said, oh my! 
Why, why don't they just go home and just <laughs> why in a bed? And, it's over, man. But you got to see this movie, the best Western movie of all time, and I uh, I disagree here with the College of Cardinals, politely, but, you know, it was a great uh -huh. movie. Let me play 60 seconds of it for you. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, put it this way. That's how she became a princess. She's yeah. a, a, you got to read about her. She's a story in and of herself. All right. Well, listen, we're not here to talk Westerns. You want to talk about beards today, too, right? Beards, yeah. You know, and uh, we had such a great time on Monday. And many people whom I did not know came to me saying how much, you know, hearing us in different parts of the state, how much they enjoyed the segment. But more than one of them, and this is the whole thing, and I'm constantly reminded I'm, in, I'm not perfect. I try to correct myself when I am. I, if I remember, I want to correct myself every single way. Uh, that, uh, and one of the things they say is, Tony, these concepts are, like, incredibly difficult. Can you break them down very, very, very distinctly? And the reason why they're difficult is because they're all designed, and I say this all the time, they're designed to confuse you. They're designed to confuse, you know, supposedly the elect. So you're right. i got to do this more simply. So we're going to talk about beards or bearding. What is a beard? Um, a beard's an old racketeering term. For example, if I want to do something, and if I want to do something under cloak and make it look like I'm doing good, I'll get somebody to stand between you and me. That will be a beard. In Connecticut, you hear the term public-private partnership. That's when, when you hear that, your, your bell should go off. It's a beer. Uh, but basically, it, it's an ancient term that uh, it hides the purpose of something that's behind something else. And when you look at the governor, and people always say, oh, it's like you're talking about teasers and you're talking about pension funds. How does this affect this locally? I said, well, that's the thing. You don't get it. Because a good racketeer thinks globally, does globally, and he acts locally. Because, you know, he spreads his risk. He can think about uh, getting, uh, you know, one tomato stand knocked over if he's got nine others. You know, and I keep saying, the guy is good. You know, whether how bright he is and all that, he's got bright people around him. And he is an effective bag man. There, there's absolutely no point. So that when people get laser focused on SEMA 4, it's like it's so much more than SEMA 4. So what you have to ask yourself is, how does this work? I'm just going to give you one example. And when political figures come on and they say, well, we're looking at this and we're looking at that, it's like they have no clue. They have absolutely no clue. You know, give me a call. I'll give you five minutes to where you absolutely need to go. I'm just going to give you one today. Um, there is an organization in Connecticut called uh, Unite Us Connecticut. Now, Unite Us Connecticut is a, uh, whatever you want to call it, a, uh, a software company. It is a public um, oak, it's not public yet, but it's an oak uh, HC, it's trying to go public, an oak HCFT entity. And when, just, just to give you an example, when you look at how a racketeer works, um, you follow a timeline, because they always follow uh, an accepted pattern. Now, let's look at something. Let's go back and revisit a few key dates, and you'll get a flavor for what we're talking about. Now, May 16, 2019, um, there is this uh, ethics agreement that they talk about that Lamont is not adhering to. Well, actually, the agreement is garbage. I mean, I'll debate anybody on your ear. I will pay $1,000 to their favorite charity to tell me why this thing works. And none of them are going to come, Lee Elsie, so I can save the money. But basically, um, May 16th, we have this ethics agreement. Everything's wonderful in Connecticut. Okay, great. Now, July 31st, 2019, we have the setup of the Oak HCF3 fund in the Cayman Islands, not even covered by the ethics agreement. Uh, so, August 6th of 2019, we have the announcement of a partnership, a public-private partnership, a beard. Uh, Connecticut Hospital Association partners with Unite Us to launch statewide network to address patients' social needs. Why August 6th? Why not July 13th? Why not March 13th? Because, look at it this way, 
you dealt with the people in Connecticut, you know that was okay. You know, you just, hopefully you got that by them, and now you got your uh, you got your pot in the Cayman Islands. Now we can quote unquote deal with this thing and putting a beard, a level of separation between what's actually happening and the money being run. Now. You know, the, the way this, uh, and actually we, we probably need to spend a few shows on this because it gets into teasers and all kinds of things, but Unite Us is running from within the Connecticut Hospital Association, which is a membership organization, and the uh, it is sponsored and run from there. It's because it doesn't give the appearance that Ned is profiting directly from it. It looks like Connecticut Hospital Association is doing a magnanimous work in addressing the social detriments of health. And since it's in a nonprofit, you don't have the disclosures that you necessarily would in terms of like uh, public securities and things like that to actually find out how much Connecticut Hospital Association is paying Unite Us. And this is not only in Connecticut. Again, think globally, act locally. Uh, this is going on in a bunch of places. It is an effort to go and actually see, and if they even let you see the books, and then you get into a fight over that. I mean, really, they're supposed to, because public charities belong to the public. People in charities don't like when I say that. And money runs here three different ways, as far as the funding for Unite Us. You have to look real hard on the website, but it says, Unite Us charges one-time fees for configuration and setup and recurring annual fees for network access, network maintenance, and third-party integrations. In other words, everybody's paying for this puppy. Everybody's paying for this puppy. And the thing that really gets me is, well, why do you need a coordinator of social services? Is this not why we pay state employees? I mean, I, uh, you know... That, that's for open. I, I will say this: if you if you have absolutely nothing to do, pull up the 990 to Connecticut Hospital Association. Take a look at those salaries. I mean, oh boy, uh, you know. And it's uh, listen. My point, my functional point in all of this is, um, we pay for this. We pay for this whole polyglot, this whole conglomerate. And you know, no one addresses it. Those that want to address it. You know, you're going after the one tomato stand where the other nine are running free. Mm -hmm. and I believe me. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for the time I have here. I could spend three hours. It, it, it's 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 unbelievable. Well, and well, I will say this: the only way, and people say, well, how do you get to the bottom of this? Well, you know, hey, join the army. I can give you a project. You know, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I could give you one thing that will spin your head. I just don't have the time to look at it. It's a long game, but you're ball, my friend. What's the t what's the tie back from the the Health United with the, to to Lamont? What what's the connection? Oh, the Unite Us corporate stock is owned by Oak HCFT. Okay. When the fees come in from these social services agencies for this coordinated software. It increases the revenue, and the thing is, you know, well, it's not a deal. Well, you know, it's not a direct deal with the state. I understand that, but yet it's the kind of thing that it is funded by public money through a nonprofit. It's very clever. It is extremely clever. Tony, always uh, making our head spin, man. Good stuff as always. We'll we'll <laughs> get my own head spin. <laughs> we'll pick this up again next time. But I appreciate it as always. Yeah, go watch high news. All right, care. you got it, kid. Tony D, sharing some thoughts with us.